Hello, this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my beautiful collection of minerals and crystals, go to my website, Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. Unfortunately, it's still under construction. You can leave comments at this video or at my email, frankriserrocksminerals at gmail.com. Riser is R-E-I-S-E-R. -E -E Today, we're going to make a video by the request of somebody that contacted me, wanting me to do it, on chlorozylenol. Chlorozylenol is a good synthesis to study, and we'll see exactly why in a moment. So let's get to the synthesis. Here we see the synthesis of chlorozylenol. Let's start from phenol. React phenol with chlorine glass under the presence of the catalyst iron. And you will attach a chlorine to the benzene ring for 4-chlorophenol. Then do a dehydration reaction with methyl alcohol with sulfuric acid with some heat about 125 degrees Celsius no more in the presence of light and we will attach two methyl groups to the benzene ring from a dehydration reaction to yield the product chlorozylenol Now, you people who are organic chemists, chemists, and I've been in the field for a while, know something and why I'm smiling. But this video is for new students to the field of organic chemistry and synthesis. You may think that this is the correct way to make chlorozylenol, but you would be thinking wrong. The yield is no product. Why? Let's revisit the synthesis. Do not do this on your organic chemistry test. Remember, benzene rings only undergo an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, not a dehydration. Dehydration will not add anything to the benzene ring. We'll need to synthesize chlorozylenol by a different means. And how do we do that? By something called ring closure. And we'll use heptane. Culture. What we'll want to do is yield this product because in this product we will find starting with 2-hydroxymethyl 3,5-heptane this molecule will in the presence of dehydration with heat in the transition state we'll see that the hydroxyl group in dehydration is removed as well as a hydrogen and this green arrow indicates ring closure these two carbons will join together and form a bond to yield the aromatic benzene structure with the two methyl groups at the end for 1,5-dimethylbenzene But how do we close that ring and add the two methyl groups? We're going to be starting it from this product, 2-hydroxymethyl 3,5-heptane. Heptene, excuse me. It's a heptene molecule with double bonds in it. Ring closure. 
circumvents mistakes of electrophilic, electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions which cannot add specific types of substituents to a benzene ring because only EAS reactions will add only certain types of molecules such as the uh, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine only to a benzene ring. will practice from ring closure. And notice in the synthesis, always do your organic chemistry synthesis backwards. You start with the product and you work backwards. Working backwards, we will need to make this molecule. And here we see the molecule that we wish to make. How can we make it? We can make it from 2-methanyl 3,5-heptene with double bonds in the structure, 7 carbons numbering the longest carbon chain with a double bond to a methyl group. Now, we will need to get rid of this double bond. This is 2-methanyl-3,5-heptene. We'll start from this molecule. Notice there's a chlorine attached to the methyl group with no double bond. React this with a base such as sodium hydroxide and it will remove the chlorine forming sodium chloride in water to yield this molecule. How do we make this molecule? We can start with 2-methylheptene. React 2-methylheptene with chlorine gas and light. Simply have it in a beaker, bubbling chlorine gas through it for about 20 minutes in the presence of light underneath, like what I have, a fume hood for chlorine glass will kill you. I know I worked in a laboratory with chlorine gas under the hood but I could still smell some of the fumes from chlorine gas and arrest it arrests your breathing. You need to do all the synthesis underneath a hood that sucks the air out and into the outside atmosphere. Now let's synthesize 2-methylheptane Notice, no double bonds. This is the product we want to make. Chloroxylenol. We'll be starting now from 1,3-dimethylbenzene. React it. If in a uh, Friedel Crafts acetylation. Uh, chlorine gas in the presence of AlCl3 forming the major product, the, min the minor product of chlorine attached here on the benzene ring. Why? Because notice there's already two methyl groups attached to the benzene ring. Methyl groups are deactivating and direct uh, and direct uh, para. Here's ortho. Here's ortho. No, here's ortho. Meta. Para. Ortho. So the major product is in the para position because the methyl groups are deactivating. All deactivating groups, which are easy to memorize, are deactivating. Activating groups on a benzene ring direct ortho para deactivating groups direct meta the only exception to this is the fact that the uh, alkyl halides such as chlorine fluorine bromine which have an electron pair to donate and you would hypothesize would be activating and this is the only exception are actually 
deactivating and direct meta. So the major product is 1,5-dimethylchlorobenzene, this molecule. And your minor product, very minor, will be 2,6-dimethylchlorobenzene. But we have no choice but to react this molecule here. React it with dilute sodium hydroxide. In the presence of heat, you'll need a furnace at 300 degrees Celsius and 3,000 PSI and you will form 3,5-dimethylphenol, this molecule. Now, we need to attach the chlorine in an EAS, electrophilic, electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. No other. React it with chlorine in the presence of AlCl3, aluminum trichloride, and you will form your product molecule of chloroxylenol. Always remember, benzene molecules only undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. Do not use any other types of reactions such as dehydration or substitution reactions to try to add substituents to a benzene ring. Only EAS reactions and memorize them. This isn't covered in Organic Chemistry 1 for sophomores in college, and do not make that mistake on the test. Organic Chemistry is a very information-loaded chemistry class, and many students, such as myself, and I had to take it more than once to finally get a B-plus in it, have to take it more than once. But remember, that's okay. It's like learning a language. It becomes fluid to you and fluent like a language. You just simply need to practice it over and over again. And let's review some other topics that are very essential in organic chemistry reactions. And these cover the nature of the solvent with the product, uh, excuse me, with the reactant in reactions. I have some post-its and I'm just going to throw these in as extra information. I keep these post-its on my lab bench to always remind me. And let's just review these. They're not related to today's topic, but they're important. Always remember that if you want an elimination to reaction, an E2 reaction, you want potassium hydroxide in the presence of alcohol. Whereas if you want a substitution reaction, an SN2 reaction, you want sodium hydroxide in the presence of water. Water is the solvent. So the E2 reaction, potassium hydroxide in the solvent of alcohol, such as methanol or ethanol. For an SN2 reaction, sodium hydroxide in the presence of the solvent water. But what is the nature of the solvent? We have protic and aprotic. For protic, that's hydrogen bonding and an SN1 reaction. Here's a little molecule of water. That's what you want to use. For aprotic, you want non-hydrogen bonding forming an SN2 reaction, not an SN1, and you'll use acetone as the solvent. And also, what about big ions in a reaction such as SN2? Use sodium iodide. That's a big ion. Small ions are hydrochloric acid and will be an SN1. SN2 inversion, which is optically active, and SN1 is racemate. Those will get you out of trouble. Remember the type of solvent that you are reacting your molecules with in a reaction and the nature of, which includes the size and product or a product of the molecule you're reacting a molecule with. 
in the back of your mind and you will not go astray. So I hope you liked today's instructional video on the synthesis of the molecule of chloroxylenol. And always remember, I usually do videos on prospecting and geology, but I'm happy to answer your scientific questions. And always remember, keep looking down.